My father was not only the funniest man in the room, but he was a fantastic saxophone player. And before I was born, he had an orchestra in Toronto. But, you know, in order to be something special, you had to leave Canada and come down to the States and prove yourself in the States. He was a little bit afraid of that transition, and, and also he had a family to take care of, so he became an accountant. And uh, as time wore on, it wore him down, you know? It wore him down, and he got a little bit bitter, especially when he lost his job when he was 51. Uh, that really broke him. Not only was he compromising to raise a family, but when you compromise and you fail, it really hurts. It hurts even more than failing at what you love. So that was an example for me. And a lot of people don't know this, but, uh, but when I was about 14 or 15, my father lost his job and I actually became homeless for quite some time. Uh, of course, I grew up in Canada, so I thought we had just gone camping, you know. But, uh, uh, I learned you that you can fail at what you don't love, so you might as well do what you love. There's, there's really no choice to be made. Mother Teresa in you. There's some work for you to do. I say to you that there is a Nelson Mandela in you. That that kind of commitment, that kind of spirit, that kind of personal power, that kind of vision of allowing yourself to be used by life is in you. That all of us came here to do something, to make a difference. And in a historical context, the world will never be the same again because you came this way. Anytime somebody asks me how I'm doing, I say I'm doing better than good and better than most. And sometimes even better than that. Your brain is the most powerful weapon in the world. Once you put away your phones and your computers and all that we have nowadays, yeah, that's great. We're up to date, we, you know, you, but your brain is the only thing you have when you're going through depression, when, you, when you're going through hard times, you're going through death, real life sh You can't Google that, man. You're alone. You're alone. You may have a shrink you're going to, you may have a best friend you're going to, but there's 24 hours in the day where you're alone in this brain. And your brain is talking to you in all kinds of ways. And it wants to control you, pull you in these different pockets. If you can't control your own brain, and your brain controls you, you're f you got to tell your brain where you want to go and how you want to go and how you want to get there. You got to control it. If not, it's over. What existed for me was, okay, man, how am I going to make this work? And, I, and all I knew back then was hard work. The only way anything gets accomplished. That's all I heard back in those days. You got to work hard. You got to work hard. I'm not getting how to... I can't get this paragraph. I can't remember what the f in this paragraph to pass this test to get in the military. Read again. Still not getting it. Read again. But if you're not getting it, write it out. And that's how I started learning. Okay, well, I can't. I got to write out everything I do. And then write it out again. And write it out again. And guess what happened? I got it. I got it. I can't swim. I'm negative buoyant. Go back again. I can't swim. Go back again. Go back again. Go back again. I got it. I realize if I keep going back and going back and going back until the sh just becomes, your mind was safe. Okay, we're gonna figure it out because he is not going to stop. It's not like I'm gonna try one more time. No, I'm gonna. It's just like alarm clock goes off. Boop. We're going back. I can't read right. We're going back. I gave myself no way out, and my mind realized that. They said, okay, we're going to adapt and overcome now. Like, a lot of people say, trying hard. They, your mind knows, man. It knows this guy's bull me, man. This guy's lying. There's no truth behind it. When I was in Navy SEAL training, people go, how were you there for 18 months? The program was only six months long. You were in three hell weeks in one year. No one's ever done that. How did you do that? I talk about the new norm. When I lived in a $7 a month place when I was growing up for a short period of time, I loved it. I didn't know any, I, I know any different. That was my norm. 
Once we moved out of that place, we moved to a $236 a month place. I was like, I never want to go back to that little piece of But if you go back to that $7 a month place, and you realize this is where I live, this is all I got. Your mind says, Roger that, this is home. So when I was going through Navy SEAL training for 18 months, and going back through all the hard parts over and over again, I told myself, after the first time, I knew it was going to be a long journey there. My body was breaking down. It was, it was just how it was going on. I said, you know what, this is my new norm. So my mind said, it's like going to work. Like, you go to work, you put your suit and tie on, I go into suffering every day. Every day, suffering, being broken, duct taping my feet up, stress fractures, shin splints, being broken. This is my new norm. And your mind says, if we're not broken, this ain't normal. We gotta be broken. So then your mind starts to get tougher and tougher and more callous. People go, how, how did you run on broken feet? Broken, broken shins. My mind knew this is how we operate. We're in, we're in Navy SEAL training. This is what we are. I became hell. And that became my new norm. I gave myself no way out. There was nothing outside these walls of hell. Nothing. I became, I love God, but for a short period of time, I became the devil because that was hell. I became, I became the boss, the owner, the CEO of Navy SEAL training. That was my mindset. And that's how you get through things. You put yourself, you immerse yourself wherever it is, and you become that. You become that and give yourself no way out. When I was 297 pounds and I was fat as hell trying to be a Navy SEAL, the scariest thing in the world to me, even to this day, was that that could have been the rest of my life. I thought then I was trying hard. That's the scariest thing in the world. I thought then, 297 pounds, working for Ecolab, spraying for cockroaches, making $1,000 a month. I thought that was me at my 100% potential. Come to find out, a few years later, I wasn't anywhere near that. 106 pounds less, graduated Navy SEAL training, went on to do all these other things. Looking back on that, that was me trying hard. That's why people gotta understand, what is in us, we have no idea until we start trying hard. And I mean really trying hard, where you're obsessed with, hey, this is my new norm. My new norm is that, wow, this isn't always fun. It's not always meant to be fun. And that's when you know you're trying hard. People hear my story and think this guy is sadistic. I realized how the, how the brain works. I figured out how the brain works. I, I'm a scared kid and that's what gives me so much power. I had no foundation and I built this off of just researching the mind. The feeling you get is basically invincibility. You realize that you can't do it all the time. When you need to do it, I know I can go to a place that I can live in. And when you know that you can run on broken legs and you can do certain things that a lot of people can do, but they're not willing to do, this power, this sympathetic nervous system of fight or flight and you're fighting it, it gives you this charge of energy of when you're sitting there at 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning and you're duct taping your feet up because they're broken and you're doing it by yourself and you're going through arguably one of the hardest training in the world. And these guys, most of them are healthy and you're going through it broken and you are at a disadvantage, but you're still there. You can feed into that and tap into that for a lot of power. But if you look at it, well, I'm broken, man. Like, I'm not gonna make it. But if you look at it as, man, I'm broken and I'm still here. And I'm fighting and I'm gonna find a way to get through this. Because I have no other place to go. It gives you a lot of power. When things start to suck really, really bad, my brain and a lot of people's brain, they don't, they, they don't go to your dad beating you up. Your brain says, we ain't out of here this is miserable so anger goes away a lot of times when you're suffering because your brain just says we got to run we got to go 
So that anger is not popping up saying, oh, I'm gonna show them. I'm gonna show those people. No, I didn't love myself. But I knew a lot of us wanna find peace first. So people say, man, you always talk about this suffering and pain. I'm at peace right now because I went through that. You don't find peace first. If you do, Merry Christmas, more power to you. More power to you. I found peace on the opposite end of finding myself. And no one really finds himself without going through trials, tribulations, suffering, accountability. And accountability is suffering. Being accountable every day for doing right for yourself, for the people next to you, it's miserable. It's hard. So, you know, even the smallest details.